A Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 17. Making the inlet and exhaust piping using modified commercial fittings. I show the machining and re-threading in detail. A new Barco spanner from a kind viewer arrives in my workshop. Resizing the slide valve as it was slightly too long and some extra views showing the straightening of the crankshaft. This part is covered in a special feature video. It's about time that I made some steam fittings for this. I've fitted gaskets but I didn't bother showing that because I've done it loads of times. For the steam fittings I'm going to use PM Research cast elbows and make piping adapters to go from a quarter by 40 threads per inch to a quarter by 32 threads per inch. I'll show that shortly. Personally, I like the look of these fittings. They seem to look very industrial revolution and steam age. I've already modified one of the pieces of pipe to go from quarter by 40 to quarter by 32. Time to connect the airline to make sure there aren't any leaks. So the inlet is successful. I also made the outlet, which if you look is underneath. They're both exactly the same, well, more or less. If I was building this engine into a plant, I would use some double unions for the inlet and outlet piping to connect it to the boiler and condenser. I received an email from one of my viewers by the name of Bobby, and he said he was going to send me a very small Barco spanner, which he did, and it is a very small Barco spanner, older than the ones I have. It's physically smaller than the 4-inch one that I already have, which is quite useful because it will be able to get into more inaccessible places. Thank you, Bobby. I do appreciate this. One can never have too many Barco spanners. Back to the piping. These cast elbows and threaded brass pipes are made by PM Research in the USA. They are available in the UK from a company called Forest Classics. The web address is on screen. Over now to the lathe and I'm cutting one of the pipes, well I'm using a parting tool to part it off, because what I need to do is thread the other end of this a quarter by 32. It's worth mentioning that these quarter by 40 threads per inch fittings from PM Research are slightly different to the ones in the UK. Generally I would run a quarter by 40 tap through the parts. I think the pitch is different, that's all. This clip shows my tailstock die holder fitted with a quarter by 32 threads per inch ME type die. And ME in this case stands for model engineering. Once the die is fitted to the die holder, here you see me using the die holder to cut the quarter by 32 threads per inch on the plain end of the piece of brass tube. The quarter by 40 thread is screwed into a nut which in turn is held in the chuck. When making thread adapters, try and avoid holding the part by the other end of the thread. In this clip you can see that the pipe is screwed into a small quarter by 40 nut. To remove the pipe from the nut, I'm using a pair of pliers, and this is bad practice. But it didn't take much effort to release the part, so it wasn't damaged. Now the engine is almost in component form. I'm going to show an extract from a video I've made recently called How to Straighten a Bent Crankshaft. This is a very simple method. I can't say it's very scientific or very engineering-like, but it works. If you want to see the full length video all about straightening the crankshaft, as I've just mentioned, it's called How to Straighten a Bent Crankshaft. Well worth a look, it's simpler than you think. I had to make a tool to do this, it's a simple piece of bar with a hole drilled in it and reamed to 9.30 seconds of an inch the diameter of the crankshaft. Here I'm using a device called a dial test indicator to check the concentricity of the crankshaft and it's not good. It was swinging about all over the place. Once I'd applied some pressure with the piece of bar with the hole in it, it started to be a bit straighter. And as you can see, it's not too far out now. It's still a bit too far to be right, but it's getting better. I didn't get the crankshaft to be 100% accurate. But a couple of thou overall is not too bad, and as you can see, the flywheel runs with considerably good concentricity on the outside. This clip shows the engine fitted with the PM Research inlet and outlets. 
and personally I do like the look of this. This Stuart number 10H is a very small engine and the last thing I want are massive inlet and outlet unions. And that's about it, I'll leave the engine running with its fairly concentric flywheel. I think I may machine around the inside edge to tidy it up. It certainly seems to run very well. In the next video I need to completely dismantle this engine for degreasing and painting. So that's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.